Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed speakers and distinguished guests. My name is Gözde Kuyumcu, and it's a great honor to be your moderator today's groundbreaking webinar. This event is collaboratively organized by Usu Ventures and OTC Markets Group, focusing on a subject of pivotal importance. The listing of publicly traded Turkish companies uh, on international exchange. We are here today to mark a first of its kind initiative in Turkey. This webinar is symbolized a significant milestone in institutional efforts to introduce Turkish firms to global markets. It highlights the beginning of an era where Turkish companies can expand their reach far beyond our national borders. OTC Market Group stands as the world's foremost platform for foreign issuers. And today we are particularly proud to acknowledge Usu Ventures as the first company to achieve premium provider status on this platform. Usu Ventures is pioneering a path for Turkish issuance in international realms. This is not uh, just a step, but a giant leap forward in enhancing Turkey's presence in global markets, of course. Our webinar will commence with an insightful introduction by Kaan Özçelik, the visionary founder of Usu Ventures. Following him, we will have the privilege of hearing from Jason Paltrowitz. Uh, he is the executive vice president of OTC Markets Group. Mr. Paltrowitz will delve into the advantages and strategies of OTC Markets Group, uh, illuminating the path for Turkish companies on global stage. And then, uh, we will hear from Stefan Spatz, who will uh, share his expertise on what U.S. institutional equity investors expect from international issuers. His insights will be invaluable, of course, for any entity looking to navigate the intricacies of international finance. From the Turkish perspective, we will be joined by Mustafa Mercan, and he is also the founder of DOF Robotics, who will share his expectations from the predominantly US-based market in the context of an international IPO. And lastly, we will explore the vibrant Turkish fintech ecosystem with Yakup Sezer, a leading figure in the field. Mr. Cesar will discuss the ambitions of fintech entrepreneurs to venture into U.S. markets and the potential trajectory of our ecosystem. Today's discussions promise to be enlightening, shedding light on the myriad opportunities of strategies for Turkish companies aspiring to make their mark on the world stage. As we proceed, I encourage our audience to engage with our panelists as their experiences and insights are not just narratives but blueprints for success in global markets. Thank you for joining us again for this significant event and let us embark this journey of exploration and discover together. First of all, uh, I will hereby announce Kaunos Çelik again for the introduction part. Gözde, thank you very much for uh, your uh, very well uh, introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, esteemed participants and uh, valuable guests. I'm Kaunos Çelik, the founder of Two Ventures. It's my great honor to uh, welcome you all this pivotal webinar. Firstly, I would like to extend my uh, heartfelt thanks to Mr. Jason Paltrow is the executive vice president of OTC Markets Group and the entire uh, team at OTC Markets uh, for their invaluable uh, collaboration and collaboration and support. Uh, actually, your contribution to bridging global markets is uh, extremely appreciated. Gözde, I also uh, want to thank you and all of 
our speakers uh, for being here today. Uh, today we are at a significant milestone uh, for Turkish capital markets. Uh, actually, considering the presence of uh, highly significant participants among the audience, uh, this could be a very ambitious uh, statement. Uh, but in spite of uh, their high potential, cross-listing activities in Turkey have been remarkably rare. Uh, it is uh, with great pride, I say, that Sur Ventures has uh, pioneered in its domain, undertaking these activities for the first time on an institutional level. Uh, our inclusion uh, in the OTC Markets Premium Provider Directory marks a cornerstone uh, in this endeavor, symbolizing our uh, commitment to expanding the horizons of uh, Turkish companies on the global stage. Uh, as everybody knows, the world has been facing consecutive uh, challenges, uh, the pandemic, uh, regional conflicts, economic crisis, uh, war and uh, currency fluctuations especially we faced in Turkey. Uh, despite these adversities, uh, Turkish companies, especially those with an export-based model, uh, have consistently shown robust growth in dollar terms. Uh, this resilience not only highlights the strength of our economy, but also positions uh, investment in Turkish stocks as an effective inflation hedging strategy. Uh, as we navigate through these uh, turbulent times, uh, the growth trajectory of Turkish companies offers a signal of opportunity for uh, worldwide investors. Additionally, today we have very valuable speakers uh, who are capable of issuing international capital markets, uh, some of whom uh, have already embarked on uh, these paths. Uh, there are exciting Turkish companies uh, in the venture uh, capital ecosystem following their lead, uh, Mr. Cesar, is a very important person uh, for this area. Uh, I believe the process uh, we are initiating today is very important, not only for uh, large-scale public companies, but also for those companies on the radar of venture capital funds. Because this is because uh, the OTC Markets Group's venture capital and index, OTC QB, holds great potential for uh, companies uh, that will be listed in the venture capital markets, which uh, said to be announced by Borsa Istanbul. In this webinar, uh, we aim to analyze uh, the mechanics and benefits of cross-listing, exploring how Turkish companies can uh, leverage international platforms like OTC markets to amplify their uh, presence uh, and attract the global investors. Uh, the journey ahead is uh, filled with potential, and we as Usul Ventures uh, committed to unlocking these opportunities for Turkish enterprises. Thank you once again uh, for joining us today. I'm confident that uh, the insights shared in this webinar will be invaluable for all participants. And uh, thank you very much again uh, for, for all uh, attendees uh, in order to join us. Thank you so much again, Kanus Çelik. He's the founder of Usu Ventures. Uh, thank you for the introduction part. And now we will proceed with uh, Jason Paltrowitz. He's the uh, EVP of OTC Markets Group. And his speech is about overview of OTC markets, benefits and strategies. Uh, Mr. Paltrowitz, please. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I think is good morning, although it's your afternoon. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to present to all of you. Uh, certainly, Khan, uh, thank you for inviting me and, and the relationship that we've built over the last couple of years um, is exciting. And, and we certainly look forward to, to helping Turkish companies access the US markets. I thought I'd start uh, the first couple of minutes because uh, probably feeling that most people in, in Turkey or on this webinar might not fully understand OTC markets and what we do. So I thought I'd give you a, a brief introduction um, and then we can go into some of the benefits and opportunities uh, for Turkish issuers, large and, and small and emerging. Um, so for those of you that aren't aware, OTC Markets Group, which has been around for, for over a hundred years in various forms, is actually the largest stock market in the US for non-US equities. So we are home to more international companies that wanna have their shares traded 
and access, traded in the U.S. and accessed by U.S. investors than any other market here. So that includes NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. Um, so we currently have a market capitalization of close to $28 trillion. Uh, we're turning over close to $400 billion in annual dollar volume. And there's currently, on any of the three markets that we operate, close to 12,000 securities that trade here. Um, over 85% of which, again, are non-U.S. equities, um, including on our OTCQX market, uh, the two largest Turkish banks. So Benkazi and Akbank are actually clients of ours um, and kind of bridged the way, if you will, uh, for Turkish companies to be able to access the U.S. markets uh, through our stock market. What makes us different than the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ and the advantage for Turkish issuers um, is that we are what's called a secondary market. Uh, so unlike the two main boards, we'll call them NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, which requires issuers to be SEC registrants and Sarbanes-Oxley compliant and to reconcile to U.S. GAAP and to go through all the costs and complexities of being registered here in the United States, our market as a secondary market gives international companies that are listed locally, in this case listed in Turkey, the ability to use all of their Turkish disclosure, all of what they're used to and understand from a Turkish regulatory environment, they're able to use all of that information as the basis through which to be able to trade in compliance in the US on our market. So that becomes a really unique value proposition in that it doesn't require companies to have to learn and understand SEC reporting alongside their, their Turkish disclosure. It doesn't require companies to think about reconciling to US GAAP if they're using IFRS. Um, in the UK, if you're a semi-annual reporter, you can remain a semi-annual reporter. Unlike if you're an SEC reporting company, you're required to do quarterly reporting. Um, it reduces things like DNO insurance and litigation risk. And so it really allows companies to maintain their Turkish heritage, uh, to be proud of being Turkish, to be listed on their Turkish stock market, um, to fly the Turkish flag, but still gives them the benefit of being uh, listed on a stock market in the United States where U.S. investors can buy and sell those securities, can trade those securities in U.S. dollars during U.S. market hours. And so we tier the top tier of our markets uh, based on the level of disclosure and the financial standards of those companies. So we operate two markets. Um, Bankazi and Akbank are actually on the top tier of our market, our OTCQX market. Those are companies that are meet the highest financial standards and also companies that trade there. Roche, Adidas, Heineken, uh, Marks and Spencer, uh, Deutsche Telekom, Lufthansa. So some of the largest global companies in the world, again, that do not want to be SEC registered, that do not want the added cost and complexity of US regulation. They wanna maintain their home market listings, trade on our OTC QX market. And then, as Khan pointed out, from a venture perspective, we have a very similar structure, but for early stage growth companies, uh, what we call venture companies, and that's our OTCQB market. And that has companies, um, in many cases, pre-revenue, again, early stage growth, companies that are putting out uh, the requisite disclosure, that are doing the right things in the public market, but that still want to have their shares traded in the U.S., by U.S. investors that understand perhaps venture companies in a way that Turkish investors might not understand. Um, and so I would say things like biotech, fintech, green tech, um, mining and exploration, where there's an ecosystem of U.S. investors that are very keen to invest and be part of that opportunity for growth. Um, those types of companies can still be listed in their local market, but access that US venture capital, if you will, that public venture capital ecosystem through an OTCQB um, quotation or listing uh, as well. This allows companies to grow into being uh, public in the US, to building out their shareholder base, to providing interested investors, traders, and market participants the ability to value that investment, 
the ability to see news and opportunities and potentially invest. And to do all of that, again, without actually uh, going through what would be a very costly and complex process of potentially a NASDAQ stock exchange listing. Um, as a Turkish company, again, you would be able to fly the flag of national pride by being uh, remaining listed in your local market, um, but be able to still take advantage of all of the opportunities um, that the U.S. investment market brings to you. Additionally, by being on the, the QX, QB market versus, um, again, what would potentially be a NASDAQ listing, um, as a Turkish company, you would end up being a very uh, small fish in a large pond, um, and all of the liquidity would suck into the U.S. market out of your home market versus uh, being an OTCQB or QX, again, as a secondary market where you would be a very big fish in a smaller pond, but have the advantage of seeing your liquidity flow back into the local market to build your Turkish presence, uh, if you will. Again, if you look at the QB market, we have close to 1,500 companies from around the world that trade there. Again, these are venture companies from the Nordics, from the AIM market, um, from Australia, from Israel, um, everywhere around the world where there's a proper venture market culture and early stage growth uh, culture. Um, those companies, again, are looking to grow and access the U.S. market through the markets uh, that we operate. Um, I think I will pause it there. I think I did my 10 minutes um, and see if anybody has any questions or if, or if we want to move on to, to our next speaker. And I thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Mr. Paltrowitz, for your speech and for the information about the benefits and the strategies for OTC markets again. And I will now proceed with Stefan Spat. Uh, he's experience, experienced in uh, market making. So uh, Mr. Spat's uh, subject will be what US-based investors look for in international issuers. Mr. Spat. Thank you. Uh, and first, I would like to say it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Special thanks to Mr. Khan for setting this up. And it's wonderful to be a part of this and for several different reasons. And the biggest one is the fact that I've spent the majority of my career in international markets uh, as a market maker. And therefore, we have interacted with the OTC Markets Group, which operates the OTC stock market, which I would describe as a decentralized stock market, as opposed to what Jason referred to, uh, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. So the way that the structure works is you have market participants, which are called market makers, which are typically broker dealers, and they are the facilitators using the platform that OTC Markets has created to facilitate trading between U.S. investors who want to diversify their portfolio to international stocks. And it's become an absolutely phenomenal growth era from the time that they first implemented the tiered approach which is, as Jason also mentioned, OTCQX and OTCQB. And those two tiers uh, are decided upon on financial material issues regarding the size of the company, sales, assets, um, market capitalization, things like that. And they have a process in place where if an international company would like to join the OTC markets, one of the steps along the way of becoming included in this process is having to appoint advisors that can help you understand the company, what tier you qualify for, and also guide you through some of the regulatory hoops that people have to jump through. Um, one of the major ones, which is something that I'm going to touch on, is the SEC Rule 12G32B. And the reason why that's significant is because uh, when the SEC, which is the main regulator of financial markets here in the United States, when they implemented this rule, it didn't really include an avenue for international companies to apply to be quoted uh, in order to have a presence here in the United States. A lot of that changed in the past 10 years. And basically, there's a few rules that the international companies have to qualify for. Uh, and I'll go over those real quick. Basically, uh, you have to be in good standing with your local market regulators. 
So in this case, when it's the Bourse Istanbul, if the companies that are listed there are in compliance with the local rules, then that's the first big step. The second step is to qualify for this exemption. The financial filings have to be translated into a convenience translation of English, and they have to be present on the company's website, and they have to be current and up to date. And if you have those two things, those are the two big rocks, and there's a few little rocks afterwards, and I won't bore you with all the details, that could be for another time, but basically what US investors, whether those are retail investors or institutional investors, or any type of sub-institution, which I refer to as maybe hedge funds, family offices, pension funds, uh, they all like to see that the companies that they're diversifying their portfolios into are compliant, in good standing, and have complied with all of the rules that allow them to have a quotation and a presence here in the United States, which essentially is important if you want to uh, diversify your shareholder base, have exposure to the U.S. market in the easiest, most simplistic way possible, and avoid any sort of interaction with the SEC and international and rules uh, related to international companies. It's an exemption, or what I like to use, probably one of the greatest loopholes in U.S. securities law in history. And since about 2006, 2007, um, when OTC markets implemented this tiered approach, they have seen absolutely phenomenal growth in the number of international companies. And now we're at a point where they are the largest stock market with international companies, non-US companies that list. And retail investors, institutions, family offices, they use the platform in order to achieve one of the most important goals of a, of a portfolio manager or an investor, which is international diversification. How do we gain exposure to different regions? just for the purpose of portfolio management. Well, OTC has created the solution and the participants that use their platform, the market makers, facilitate that and it has become an extremely efficient market because it's self-correcting. So when a market maker posts a two-sided quotation on the OTC dealer, which is a alternative uh, trading system here in the States, that's a legal distinction for what they are called, market makers are allowed to post quotes. And so when the company, so we'll say in this case, when a Turkish company decides they want to proceed with this process and put forth some effort in marketing and prospective shareholder awareness, elevate their profile on international markets, they do that. And if there's a US investor, whether that's a retail investor or institution, they wanna buy, a Turkish company, they place an order with their broker. The broker will route the order to one of the many market makers that might be posting a quote at that given time in US dollars during US market hours. And they will facilitate a trade by going to the local market and buying the shares and then delivering them here to the US investor. But everything remains within Turkey. So the shares stay within a custodian in Turkey, and the market maker who is obligated to deliver the shares to the U.S. investor who wants to buy them creates a, a ticker symbol through a process, and the shares will appear in the U.S. investor's account with a new ticker symbol. But once again, clearing and settlement always occurs in Turkey. This is just a conduit between U.S. investors and the Turkish market or any other market around the world and of which many of them do participate. Um, Turkey is, is no exception. Uh, as Jason had mentioned, there are two very large uh, Turkish companies that already trade OTC on the OTC QX, the top tier, because of their size and their visibility uh, on, the world, on the world market. And that's essentially what US investors are looking for. Quality companies from different markets allowing them to diversify their portfolios into different regions, into different currencies, in order to achieve their portfolio management goals. So quality companies, current in their reporting, having an English version that's accessible to US investors, and being in good standing with the local market regulators. 
essentially it's as easy as that. And then of course, the company has to apply some effort with a marketing campaign, perhaps even a, a US road show coming over here, meeting with institutions and telling your story firsthand. And that's the, uh, those are the essentially the key ingredients to a successful experience with uh, a cross listing. I think okay. I'll probably pause here unless there's questions later on and I'll allow those speakers to continue. Yeah, we have some questions actually, but I'll just uh, tell them uh, at the end of the uh, webinar. So now uh, I hereby uh, announce Mustafa Mertcan. He's the founder of DOF uh, Robotics. His speech will be about why technology companies aim for listing on US and international exchange. So, uh, Mr. Merchan, please. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Khan, for this great uh, webinar. And uh, good evening for everyone. Uh, I'm Mustafa Merchan, the founder of DOF Robotics, a leading technology producer in the amusement industry. This is our company. Today, I'm thrilled to share our journey and vision as we prepare for a significant milestone. Our IPO on the London Stock Exchange and our plans for cross-testing through OTC Markets Group to reach US investors. As we stand at the cusp of this exciting phase, it's pivotal to acknowledge the strategic importance of OTC Markets Group in our global outreach. OTCM serves as a crucial platform for foreign issuers like us, providing an avenue to tap <clears throat> into the West and diverse investment pools of the United States. This step is not just about expanding our reach. It's about embracing the global potential for our innovative solutions in robotics or and entertainment technology. A critical aspect for us at DOF Robotics, as we venture into these international waters, is the liquidity provision role of the OTC markets. Liquidity is the lifeblood of any public company, and it's especially crucial for technology companies like us, like ours that thrive on innovation and rapid growth. The OTC markets ability to offer efficient and accessible trading opportunities is a key factor in our decision to pursue cross-listing. It's not just about being listed. It's about ensuring that our shares are actively traded, providing real value to our investors and stakeholders. Our journey to the IPO in London Stock Exchange, and I see the Burchin is here, by the way. I think uh, she's following this, uh, and he, he should ask uh, something from the Q&A. So uh, our journey to the IPO and cross this thing is a testament to the resilience, the ambition of Turkish companies in the global arena. With OTC Markets Group, we are not just reaching out to new set of investors. We are inviting them to be a part of a future shaped by cutting edge technology and entertainment experiences. In conclusion, as DOF Robotics embarks on this new chapter, we are excited about the opportunities that lie ahead. Our goal is to not just list our shares, but to create a, less, a lasting impact, building a bridge between Turkish innovation and global investors. Thank you for your attention. And I look forward to future where technology transcends borders, uh, bringing joy and excitement to people worldwide. Thank you so much. Thank you, you so like much. Ask, if you'd like to ask, Maybe later. Yes. Mustafa Merchan, thank you so much again, uh, founder of DOF uh, Robotics. And the last part will be with uh, Jakub Cesar. He's uh, also founder of Pioneer. Uh, his topic will be about Turkish fintech ecosystem and entrepreneurs' uh, dreams for the US markets. Uh, hi again, Jakub Cesar. Now the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for all. I mean, this is a very serious and very important subject on the, I mean, FinTech Founders Table. So thank you, Khan, for inviting me here. And also thank you, um, Otis Market, to discuss about this matter. 
Yeah, and as Mustafa says, this is one of the critical points in the, in the fintech founders or any kind of startup founders, Asian, you know, we are all looking for money, we are all looking for investment, even, I mean, in these um, conditions. So this is, um, I think, one of the main important uh, topics. Um, let me start with what we are doing first, and then, I mean, of course, we will talk about a little bit the fintech environment in Turkey, fintech ecosystem in Turkey, what the fintechs are doing there. Um, how about the investment side? What the approach to the investment, and then maybe IPO or listed or the market, some kind of platforms like this. So uh, this is Jakub, the founder of uh, Pioneer. Um, we are a, a fintech venture builder. I mean, uh, that creates uh, innovative end-to-end um, -end fintech solutions. I mean, for both our own fintechs and both our uh, corporate clients, and also I mean the other fintech players in the market. <clears throat> we are building. Uh, fintechs from stretch and then we are supporting well, all fintechs um, to reach their main goal uh, our vision of course in 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 the fintech side and the fintech builder side to support both individuals and uh, both businesses in their financial journey by uh, removing pains uh, before talking about fintechs maybe um, in the in, in terms of the fintech fintech area this is important so we are not just creating or not just working on to create some fintechs or to, I mean, just in the, fin I mean, just the payment or et cetera in some different lines. Um, our main um, why or our main motivation is to remove the money matters and to, I mean, empower the people, make uh, wise money decisions and create financial. <clears throat> we have some different kind of fintechs in Turkey right now operated by, uh, under the umbrella of Pioneer. We have a, um, SME banking platform just for uh, empowering SMEs, giving them all kind of, this is a neo bank, I mean, uh, for SMEs, giving them all kind of financial services and also empowering their financial journey by supporting these guys about the financial inclusion. We are working on a digital lending platform, a sub and sub dealer platform. Pioneer also not just, I mean, building um, its own fintechs, also we are uh, working with so many big companies in Turkey we are building an investment bank. We are building an e-money company, a payment company. So many companies also we work with them. This is maybe important and related to the topic, today's topic. Uh, we work with a uh, tech consultancy company in Turkey. And then we transform, this is listed on the stock exchange. I mean, Borsa Istanbul. We transform this um, consultancy company into a technology company <clears throat> um, and in increasing its market value by nine times. So uh, we are doing this and we are in the just middle in the uh, ecosystem, right? I mean, FinTech, because we are working with so many players, the banks, the MA companies, investment brokerage, so many things. Uh, so we are very um, sensitive about what's going on in the, the FinTech um, ecosystem. Maybe uh, there might be some uh, guests from uh, the, uh, all of the Turkey. I can highlight some information about what's going on in the financial ecosystem in Turkey. Of course, all these topics is not uh, direct to the companies ready to, uh, when we are talking about fintechs right now, of course, they are not ready to launch uh, their companies into any kind of stock exchange, but we are building the companies later than they will be go for IPOs. That's why it's important. So we are feeding the companies right now in, in, in the um, financial ecosystem. Um, you know, actually, Turkey um, has a, a diverse and very dynamic financial ecosystem. Uh, there are so many players. It's really very hard ecosystem. There are so many players, including uh, banks, e-money companies, payment companies, brokerage, asset, insurance, um, more than roughly 700 companies um, operating in FinTech area. <clears throat> you know, Turkey has some uh, big financial crisis before. Uh, in the history. That's why all the regulators create a very strict base, very strict and well-regulated area and protect the uh, protective structure for this fintechs and other um, maybe the players. But in the market, um, the major players, I mean, have their incredible technologies. All the banks in Turkey, by the way, as Pioneer, we operated in, in, the, in the European countries and we developed so many fintechs and we found so many banks there. So we can compare the market, how, what kind of areas has very strong in Turkey, what kind of areas are very, I mean, just negative in Turkey. So in Turkish finance players, it doesn't matter the bank or the EMI or the brokerage or the asset management, they are, we can easily say that they have 
amazing advanced technologies. So, and they invest significantly in the technology side. Everyone has their own, for example, core banking system. When you look at, I mean, the European players, European banks, it's really, uh, it, it looks that it's really, I mean, un unbelievable because they don't have their core banking system. Every bank in Turkey developing its core banking system, investment in their tech stack a lot. So this creates an incredible competition, by the way, in the sector. So, and also uh, this competition, I mean, between the banks and the other place creates so many unhidden potential for the fintechs. Um, I don't know, probably you heard about the numbers. I mean, in Turkey, when you look at the, uh, the the maturity of the environment, of the ecosystem, the customers, for example, who has credit card or the or the individuals who has push message, who has connected the financial ecosystem, the numbers are incredibly high with uh, more than 93 million of credit card holders. Turkey ranks the seventh, I mean, in the world. So this is really a, an enormous market when you compare to others. And also uh, that's why it creates so many uh, potential areas and uh, so many, I mean, the FinTech founders are attracted because of this um, potentials. And they are coming here, they are funding FinTechs, they are funding different kind of um, uh, regulated players. So the ecosystem is really, um, it's just like the shark tank. They are really biting each other. So the FinTechs trying to find different kind of um, uh, points. In terms of the investments, fintech investments in Turkey, maybe we can talk a little bit about this because later we are all talking about the seed, series A, C, D, let's et cetera. But at the end of the day, any kind of fintech founder or any kind of startup founder in Turkey, I know that from my friends, I know that from the, I mean, the ecosystem, they're all dreaming about to go for an IPO later, maybe Europe, maybe, I don't know, um, within this or this markets, um, offers maybe later us the fintech i mean in investments uh, you know the all the fintech investments not just in turkey but also in the in the the global side they are decreasing because of some you know the the the, the economic conditions the investments when we compare the previous years i don't i don't remember the um, exact numbers but i know the the percentages roughly uh, the investment numbers the deals are dropped to and 20 persons roughly decreased. So this affects Turkey also um, because all the VCs, all the other, I mean, investment arms, they are just directly connected to the um, European parties or the US parties or other kind of parties. And also, I just forget talking about this, that the Turkish financial ecosystem is really connected to the global uh, financial ecosystem. It doesn't matter bank or the others. Um, it's really hard right now in these days in Turkey to reach an investment, not just because of the global, I mean, trends, because also the Turkey has its own very strong domestic agenda. Maybe you heard about this last year. We had an election. We had a big earthquake. We had some um, amazingly problematic financial issues. So they all, I mean, the all investors in Turkey also and the investors of other countries to who want to come to Turkey and invest, they a little bit lost their appetite. But uh, the, the Turkish, I mean, investors or VCs survived in these conditions and they find different kind of methods they jointly invest, et cetera. And then um, this is uh, probably at the next, I mean, maybe uh, chapter of the year, we will see a robust uh, increase just uh, coming from the, also the global um, improvements. Um, when we talk about investments, yeah, it's not a very clear, a very bright picture, but you know, when we're talking about fintech, when we're talking about uh, finance ecosystem, the regulation is very important. Maybe um, I might hide a little bit the regulation side. So um, despite all the bad and negative um, news in the um, investment side, we had an amazing regulation every year in Turkey. Um, it's very critical, you know, about the fintech, about the to create fintechs, to maintain fintechs, to to operate as a fintech, you need a different kind of license. But the, the regulatory needs to open this ways, and then the others should follow the way. Um, the regulatory bodies, there are so many regulatory bodies in Turkey, uh, regulating banking side, the investment side, the credit side, payment side. It's really well developed, more than developed and mature than European uh, countries. Um, the maybe you heard about this. The government just 
established and um, Istanbul Finance Center, they moved all the state banks and regulatory bodies to, from the capital Ankara to Istanbul. So they want to increase and synergy and this strength cooperation between the financial sectors because all the financial players are recreated in, in Istanbul. Istanbul is the, you know, the capital in, in the economic side. So uh, digital banking infrastructure, digital banking license, open banking license, bank and service license, KYC license. Then the next, the last year was amazingly bright about the license option. They released so many licenses and also following this license, so many players came to the market. Uh, it was a really legendary year, I mean, the last year, because after uh, 30 years later, the uh, the government or the PRSA, the banking regulator, issued um, banking license and give banking license, investment banking license, digital banking license, more than 15 players. Right now, there was more roughly 50 players in the banking area. Right now, it's just reached to 80. I mean, this is a very uh, tremendous effort. So... And this also creates, I mean, this, uh, so many banks started to operate. So the incumbent fintechs in Turkey, this also creates a different, I mean, opportunity because they want to uh, compete with themselves. And also they start to look for collaboration within the fintechs. So right now, probably this year, we may leave the one of the brightest or the next year, 2024 and 2025, one of the brightest uh, years, it might be one of the brightest years in the in the fintech and banking collaboration or other player collaboration. So uh, this is, I mean, very briefly what's going on in Turkey. Uh, I know that every fintech founder, the 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 any, any kind of boss, etc. In this market, they are dreaming about um, a IPO at the end of the journey. So uh, this is really important what we are talking today. Um, that's why. Thank you again for all of you to bringing this table, this topic, uh, to the table. Um, we believe that the future of fintech um, is really bright for all of us, and there are so many opportunities for IPOs, etc. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much, Jakub Cesar, uh, for your uh, speech. Now, um, question part. So, I'll just. Pass the questions. First of all, um, Burçin Erişik has uh, some questions. Uh, I think this one for Jason Kaltrowitz. Uh, the question is, what are the main compliance requirements to be accepted to the OTC market? Jason. Thank you. Um, good question. So I think Stefan kind of touched on some of it. Uh, the 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 beauty of OTC markets is that from a compliance perspective, as Stefan said, you're really required to meet the local market uh, listing requirements. So again, the 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 Rule 12 G32B, which is the great American sexy name uh, for a regulation, uh, states that so long as you're um, in compliance on your local market, and you're making available whatever your local market requires in English through the markets operated by OTC Markets Group, and that's a change that occurred in the last couple of years. So it now requires that we take it, not that it's just on your website. Um, so long as you're making those things available, in essence, you've met your regulatory requirement. There is nothing in addition uh, that you have to provide. Now, to be on our QX and QB markets, there's an application process, and you just have to disclose, um, you know, on an ongoing basis, again, whatever you're disclosing um, in Istanbul, um, any material news. Um, and then we do a cursory look at your board and your insiders and all of the things that any, any stock market would do from a listings perspective. Um, but the key point there, unlike... Uh, the main boards in the U.S. is that there is no additional regulatory requirement. Um, you're simply utilizing your home market uh, disclosure and financials, and and that's kind of it at that point. Thank you so much. Uh, one more question for you, Jason. Uh, again, from Burçin Erişik. Uh, from which stock exchange is the OTC market attracts the listed companies? Uh, first three stock ex exchanges. 
what are them? Uh, the first three. So I think the question is asking what's our biggest, our current biggest markets. Um, that would probably be, yeah. um, I mean, we have countries listed on, on our markets from over 50 different countries. Um, but the biggest, the three biggest probably would be um, the UK, uh, Canada, um, and maybe Germany or, or Australia. I guess um, we also have a lot from from France. Um, we have a bunch from Switzerland. So, yeah, we have companies from around fifty markets. But I think those are the top three. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you again. And uh, the question is from Azat Küçükkaya. Uh, the question is for Jakub Cesar. Uh, how can Turkey startups protect their credibility in Europe or USA, especially in this effects of crisis? Uh, thank you for attention, he said. <laughs> yeah. <It's amazing. laughs> you know, we are facing so many crises and it's just like, I mean, um, in, in any country in the modern world, they have, I mean, the entire crisis they are living in their life, we are just living all the crisis in just one week. So, this makes all our startups and all our, um, even it doesn't matter if fintech or other guys make a very strong structure and uh, very, I mean, stable. Um, to, I mean, to, to protect their credibility, of course, right now, because of some, I mean, um, I don't know, the, but uh, the political problems, uh, when you go for an investment to any kind of, I mean, foreign investor, yeah, they are really just stopping there off if you're coming from Turkey. So um, in these days, the, the the popular tech companies or the fintechs they are just following the same way they are just i mean um, transferring their companies ownership into the other countries for example they are, they are just moving to the just an example netherlands or the, the estonia etc they are founding their companies there and they are bringing all their ownership to this company and operating as a european company so it's one way it's a very common way right now in these days in turkey but you know, it's not just about um, changing the ownership. For uh, if you want to do any business in, for example, U USA or the um, the European Union, and for it's important as the technologically I, because um, for the if these are the local services, you have to um, create an extremely I mean developed experience for for the customer side. So it's not just about protecting the credibility, it's also so. Um, it, it's, I think it's important and uh, protecting credibility to create an innovative solution to, I mean, to to empower the, any kind of, I mean, customers' um, journey or their cut their pain. This is more important than, I mean, changing the or protecting the credibility. It's it's very easy. It's it's not a big, I mean, I mean, problem. Just change the ownership. It's done. They don't look. They're just looking for your where where you are located, where your company is located. If it's net. I don't. I mean, Netherlands. It's okay. Everything is okay. Uh, this is a common way, but I want to emphasize that to creating the product, operating in the local market, creating a best experience is more important than protecting credibility. Thank you. Thanks so much again. And there is a comment from Burcin Erishuk, by the way. Uh... She has just given an information. Uh, 62 active banks and two of them are all digital banks licensed very recently and approximately 90 payment and e-money institutions licensed, she said. Uh, is there anyone to add some comments on it or I'll just proceed some more questions. Okay, and uh, I have a question for Kanus Celik. Um, uh, as a foreign investor, let's say, many funds and organizations can conduct investment process through various channels. Uh, as Usu Ventures, uh, what is your value proposition here? Thank you. Uh, listing on OTC markets targets an investor base uh, beyond the traditional investor profile. Um, moreover, moreover, uh, the investments uh, attract through cross system can be likened uh, to uh, a core investment model. Actually, it offers uh, an alternative 
uh, where institutional investors can directly access uh, market shares. Uh, this process uh, on a macro scale uh, can also uh, create awareness uh, at the country level in front of an investor audience, uh, not directly targeted initially. Uh, as the number of cross systems uh, from Turkey increases, uh, we will not only talk about the increased visibility of uh, these companies, but also uh, the enhanced recognition of the national capital markets among U.S. stock investors. Uh, this process could be followed by uh, various models such as ETFs, and as Mr. Stefan mentioned, it might have a leveraging effects uh, MA processes, I think. So it can has uh, I mean it it has some more advantages from other kind of investment types, let's say. Exactly, uh, being cross listed cross listed on uh, OTC markets indexes uh, is not uh, end of the uh, projects. Actually, it make uh, it will open uh, a lot of new uh, doors about the capital markets. Okay, thank you so much. So, is there any other questions? I think for now, that's all of it. Thank you so much for everyone uh, for joining us today. We will briefly uh, want, want to today introduce you all the uh, advantages. Uh, OTC markets and all the companies who wants to briefly just uh, inform uh, the investors uh, in foreign countries let's say uh, thank you so much